Hello, I'm Harry Riley. Welcome to Harry's 10 Minute Tales. This is called Biscuit and Stagger, a short story by Harry Riley. We met quite by accident about seven years ago, and that was how it all began. On one of those rare, hot summer days, when the mere act of walking seems to drain all the energy out of your legs. If you know what I mean. I was taking my usual woodland walk before tea and had just stopped to draw breath when I heard it. Pick your feet up, you clumsy oaf. You almost flattened me just then. It was a high-pitched squeal and I don't want you to think I'm a racist or sexist or voicist or any otherist. But this speaker didn't sound quite human. It was more like the false, echoey sound that comes from a ventriloquist dummy. Apparently it came from nowhere and really irritated me. I looked around, but I was quite alone. No sign of man or beast. After shaking my head and thinking I'd imagined it, I carried on my way. Just around the bend in the track, I glimpsed a couple of rabbits, and might have given chase. But today I couldn't be bothered, so I sat down and scratched my jaw, the way you do. And then I heard it again. Oh bother, I thought it was too good to be true. I'd have been better off hitching a ride on a three-legged donkey. I'll never get home at this rate. There it was again. I wondered if I'd caught a touch of the sun. The screechy echo was coming from right behind my ear. Anyway, deciding to humour it, I asked the obvious question. Who are you? And where are you? Uh, no, you first. What's your name? And why are you, why are you wearing those dark glasses? OK, I gave in. Because I'm a little past my best, and my sight's not as good as it should be. I'm a Jack Russell named Biscuit, and I object to giving anybody a free ride. The invisible man behind my left ear began a long, choking laugh. Oh dear, we are a right pair. There's you a blind dog, Biscuit, and here's me a five-legged flea called Stagger. I was curious. It was an obviously clever and articulate flea, the chance had blown across my path. But how had he come to lose a leg? It's perfectly natural for a dog to have fleas, and it's nice to make new friends. But I'm a sucker for a story, and I just had to know more. How'd you lose your leg? Been in the wars, have we? Or were you born like it? I began to wish I had never asked, as he bent my hair back and started on his tail. I'm not your average fly by night. I was fit and active. I had ambitions to get on. So I joined the local flea circus and worked my way up to become the star attraction. It was during a very dangerous trick, a reverse triple leap and backwards somersault flip from the high wire, that I fell and landed awkwardly. Yes, you've guessed it. There was no safety net. And, and although I had the best medical attention money could buy, my damaged leg had to be amputated at the knee. I'd fallen at a tremendous rate, and the only street surgeon said I was lucky to be alive. He sighed. Now I hobble about with a wooden leg. Luckily, I was kept on at the circus as chief coach, and in all modesty, I've trained the best fleas in the land. I cut him off there. I could so see his story was going to take all night. I'm a sociable sort of chap, and was getting hungry, so I offered to take him home for a for a bite or two with me. Excuse the pun. I said it wasn't far to go and explained my modest circumstances. I live alone in a small cottage, but you're welcome to share what I have if you'd like to join me for a bite of tea or a bit of tea, old fellow. Over a cup of Earl Grey and a toasted tea cake, my new friend continued with his amazing celebrity-filled life story. I hail from a long line of artists, my family have always been go-getters. My great-great-grandfather rode with Buffalo Bill in his Wild West show, and Dad performed with a fantastic international escape artist, the great Flea Deeney of Barnum and Bailey. My younger sister, Lycia, is a top model on a catwalk. She's even appeared on Big Brother, but had to leave early. Couldn't stand all the backbiting that went on behind the scenes. He hesitated. You say you're practically blind? I nodded. You have it in one. A-G-E. Progressive glaucoma. Nothing can be done. 
More tea? Later, over a cigar and a drop of single malt, he developed his great idea. A double act that only the two of us would know. To all intents and purposes, it would just be me, performing on my own, doing impossible tricks for a blind dog. I could become your managing coach, teaching you sword swallowing, fire eating, and my favourite trick that always brought the house down, riding a bicycle blindfolded through a series of road cones. I could be with you, giving secret instructions from behind your ear. Every step, or rather, pedal of the way. Despite my modest protestations that you can't teach an old dog new tricks, he would not be deflected. And eventually, after much hard work and bruising falls, he introduced me to Bertie Miles Circus as Wonder Dog, the amazing blind Bisquito. We travelled the world together, and now he's sadly gone, buried under the old apple tree in my small garden. I mow the grass around his grave every week with my fly mow and keep the cats away. As Bisquito, I carried on for a while with an apprentice flea, but it was never the same. And so I finally retired to write a story, his story, I thought the world should know.